I am a serial planner when it comes to holidays. While it pains me that my glorious 2021 trip won't be happening, I'd like to reflect on a beautiful and much overlooked route to Japan's Rabbit Island from my 2019 trip. Given that rabbits are literally illegal where I live, an island full of them is beyond appealing for me. The issue is, is that it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. And pretty much everywhere I've looked, people recommend taking a two and a half hour Shinkansen from Osaka just for the day trip. I think that's pretty boring and a long way to go just for the one thing. So here's how you can make the entire adventure to Bunny Paradise memorable and worthwhile. My first suggestion is that you spend at least a night or two in Hiroshima. It's a lovely city with tramps everywhere, the Pokemon Center sells exclusive Magic Carp cross Hiroshima Carps merch, and you can eat as much of the superior Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki as you desire. Not to mention the somber yet unmissable experience of the A-Bomb Dome, Peace Memorial Park, and Museum. Hiroshima is also very close to Miyajima, which is an iconic and beautiful island that has amazing views of the bay, and an aquarium where you get to touch penguins, which is an experience that I will never forget. There is quite a bit to do around the city, and it definitely deserves an extended stay if you can manage it. Now I'm bringing up Hiroshima because one, it's cool and you definitely should visit, but two, it's also situated in a great position for an adventure to Okonoshima, the rabbit island. Okonoshima is located within Japan's inland sea. In fact, it's super close to the Shimanami Kaido, which is lauded as one of the most scenic areas in the country. So my second suggestion is to disregard whatever efficient route that Google Maps recommends, and instead travel by local train along the coastal Kurei Line to soak up the views. This train journey was special for me. It felt like riding through a Ghibli movie or something. The area is pretty sparsely populated, especially compared to concrete jungles like Osaka and Tokyo that you'll already be familiar with. As a bonus, if you board the front of the train, you'll be able to see straight through the driver's cabin for a better view of the scenery. I love this train ride so much that it stole my attention away from the recently released Pokemon game at the time, which I hope is saying something. I have one more suggestion before we get to the main event. Since we're traveling on the Kure line, it obviously goes through Kure, which you've probably never heard of, but it was once Japan's largest naval base and launched the Yamato, which was the largest battleship ever built. There is an entire museum dedicated to it, which is well worth your time if you're interested in this sort of thing. So with Hiroshima and Kure behind you, there's only one stop left, and that's Tadano Umi Station, which is just a short walk away from the ferry that will take you to the Rabbit Island. Here you'll be able to buy your tickets, rabbit food, and any souvenirs, as well as human food for yourself at the cafe. Food and drink options are very limited on the island, so if you plan to stay for a while, make sure you're stocked up. The ferry only takes 15 minutes, you'll be playing with the bunnies in no time. One thing that was interesting about the island is that there are actually way less rabbits than I expected. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of rabbits, but it's not the sea of fluffy bunnies that you might be expecting. Nevertheless, I loved my time there, and of course, I absolutely recommend going, or else I wouldn't be making this video at all. When I was feeding some of the rabbits, one of them bit my finger. It hurt, but I didn't get rabies and die, so I guess that worked out for me in the end. <laughs> Many other people have covered the activities on the island much more thoroughly than I will here, but the gist of it is that there's a ruined power plant and a poison gas museum, because before there were bunnies, there were war crimes. And if you really have the time to spare, you can stay at the hotel on the island too. Once you're finished basking in the beauty of the inland sea and enjoying the company of countless rabbits, it's super simple to get back to civilization. This whole route has to be my favorite and coolest day trip that I've ever done, from Hiroshima to Kure to Okonoshima and ending in Osaka. If you exist within the Venn diagram of rabbit lovers and World War II history geeks, you're not going to find a more exciting adventure than this. I'll leave some resources in the description so you can check out all of these places individually and make your own perfect day trip too. If you like this video, you know what to do, 
and I'll be down in the comments to talk about anything Japan travel related if you want to. I usually make videos about anime figures, so if that's something you're interested in, check out the rest of my channel too. As always, thanks for watching. This has been the Ando Experience, and I'll catch ya in the next one. Bye!